go searching for it. Welcome back, Mr. Elliot Feynman, CEO and founder of the National Gun Victims Action Council uh, on the Ring Central Celebrity Hotline. Sir, you before we went to commercial, you had uh, a thought? Well, I, yes. I wanted, Mike, to respond to your uh, comment uh, about the difference between a something being an amendment, you know, in the Constitution, and something like driving, not, you know, you call it the difference between a privilege and a, and a, and a right, I guess, was what you said. Yeah. First of all, part of the Second Amendment, and I'll say it again, is that it is the word regulation. And rights that we're all familiar with, the right of free speech, of voting rights, all rights in the Constitution are regulated. You know, if you're going to vote, you have to have an address, you have to be a certain age, you have to have, you know, certain requirements that you meet. Uh, you can't yell fire, you know, in a, in a crowded theater. Uh, so there are regulations. And the idea that the Second Amendment should have no regulations, you know, that it alone should be regulation-free, uh, makes no sense to me. The other thing I want to say, and this is really important because you used a word that uh, so many of the people, you know, on your side use, which is the, the slippery slope. And here's, here's what, I, what I have to say about that. The people on your side cling to what I call a worthless defense against the government taking their guns away. And that worthless defense prevents any sane gun law from being passed. We can't even pass a law to not to, to stop the sale of cop killer bullets. Imagine, we can't pass a law to stop the, the, you know, the sale of bullets that pierce for a police officer's vest. And why? Because any law, you know, is a slippery slope. And what I think people don't understand is that the government doesn't have to know where a single gun is located to take them away. That's not how guns, governments take guns away. They just issue a law saying that in 60 days nobody's to have a gun. Anybody who has one goes to jail for 15 years and pays a million dollar fine. Anybody who knows someone who had a gun and didn't tell them you know, has the same, you know, a similar penalty. Oh, and we'll pay people, you know, we'll bribe people to tell us who has guns. The, go the government doesn't have to know where a single gun is located. So this worthless defense of blocking any sane gun law because it stops a slippery slope is the primary reason we can't get going here. Okay, let's you know, back up. Let's back up a little bit because I want to address something. Sure. Uh, According to the Bill of Rights, and you said that, you know, even though we have a right to free speech, you can't yell fire in a, in a movie theater, I think was the act. Well, see, here's the difference between a right and a privilege. A privilege you have to earn. You earn it through training. You get licensed. And then if you violate the conditions of that privilege, it can be revoked. A right can't be revoked. But along with it comes responsibility. Can you yell fire in a theater? Yeah. Are there is, is there a consequence to that? Absolutely. But no law prevents you from acting on that as long as you are willing to take the consequences. Now, of course, the fire in a theater thing is kind of outdated because people pay so much to get into the movie theater. I don't think anybody <laughs> wants to ruin their evening by doing something that stupid. Uh, but <laughs> But, That's funny. Got got priced out of the language. So, so, so. Uh, but let, let's let's let, let's get back to this uh, now. And other rights aren't regulated. What other rights hold are conditions and consequences, both good and bad. If I want to stand in the middle of a synagogue with a Nazi uniform on, I'm free to do that. Per my constitution, is it smart? Is there going to be consequences? Does it mean I can do things consequence-free? No. I have a right to own a firearm. I take that responsibility. I lock up and secure that firearm when I'm not using it. Uh, I train with it. I shoot it. I trained my kids. I trained my kids growing up how to use them. I took responsibility for that right 
that I have because I know that if I don't take responsibility for that right, there will be consequences. And that is the tenet of a free society. Not free from consequence, that consequences will be had based on your individual actions. Now, I do not believe for one second as a police officer, as an ex-police officer, that writing a law mandating that you use common sense and secure your firearms to where toddlers can't get a hold of it, it would not prevent toddlers from getting a hold of firearms, but it would dictate a consequence when you don't. And that's already in, that's already in the works. I mean, I, I'm not in the works. That already exists. That's called reckless uh, manslaughter. If, if the prosecutor wants to prosecute it. Now, a lot of times in the cases like that, case-by-case -case basis, just losing a child because you're an idiot, uh, a lot of courts figure that's punishment enough, and they don't proceed with the prosecution. But they can because there is a what's called reckless endangerment, or uh, it, it's called uh, in, involuntary manslaughter when you leave a firearm out and somebody gets a hold of it and shoots himself who's not qualified or too young. And my only... Uh, my only answer to that is out of the 300 million firearms that we have and of the 20, I think, what was it, 32,000 people that were that, that lost their lives in firearms last year, uh, the percentage of accidental discharges was even less than that. And that's, that's a very small percentage of a population of free men. Now, as a gun owner, if I'm not going to leave razor blades, knives, cleaning equipment, or cleaning, uh, you know, poisonous cleaning supplies out for a toddler to get into. My common sense when my kids were that age were, if I'm not going to leave that stuff out, I'm certainly not going to leave my loaded firearm laying around. Does that make sense? Well, and once you talking for you, and now, now, okay. well, I, I know I am. But see, here's the thing. Here's the thing, but Mr. There Fireman. Are so many cases, so many cases of where the. Uh, kid took the gun and went to school, killed other kids, and then killed themselves. And that is absolutely 100%. That's the, absolutely. The gun wasn't stored, and there's no, there is no liability for the parents. Yes, there so is. To, to, no, there's not. There's not. There's not. So what I was do, building on your, 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 your talk about rights and consequences, my, my consequence would be that if... Uh, a kid took your gun and went and killed anyone, you'd be an accomplice to murder. Okay? Well, and it would be involuntary manslaughter. Murder, it would be involuntary the, manslaughter. The guns, well, whatever, whatever, whatever the kid Because did it wasn't gun, intentional. It was reckless. So, well, the, whatever. So I've it would be involuntary manslaughter any, or manslaughter. I've never, but, seen, I've never seen any parent or relative uh, brought up or I have. reckless endangerment, or you know, I'm I not have. aware of. If you're aware of it, I'd be I'd be well, happy I, to hear about it. Well, I know, you can I just know go into open records and you can look it up. Them. See, that stuff isn't the hand picking of information is the other thing that kind of gets me about this whole thing. On both sides, uh, you know, there are uh, cases where parents uh, did pay the consequence, not only of losing their child, but you know, they paid the consequence for not securing their firearms properly. Just like you secure bleach and razor blades and knives, kitchen knives. You know, if you got a toddler, I, I raise two kids. You don't leave anything out except pots and pans and wooden spoons because they seem to have a tenant to go after those. But my guns were always stored, uh, uh, locked and stored, except for the ones that I had uh, placed uh, in my home for defense, and those were way out of reach. And then when my kids were old enough... Uh, say five or six, uh, I started bringing them down, letting my son clean my, my pistols after I cleared it, taught them gun safety. And you're right, that is me. But here's the thing. You can't save everybody through legislation. You can't legislate common sense, and you cannot legislate morality. That's, that's, that's the slippery slope I'm talking about. Now, it's sad. it's sad that that child gets a hold of the gun and takes it to school. It's a tragedy. That parent should be held accountable, and in a lot of cases they are, but it's just not reported because it's not going to make I news. Uh, I, have, I haven't, frankly, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm happy to be educated about this, Mike. I haven't seen any cases well, where the ones, the ones I'm familiar with where the parents were held 
uh, responsible legally, you know, and paid, uh, you know, the price they should pay if you let a kid take a gun and kill other kids. Well, so here's the thing. You're saying they let them, like they gave the kid the gun, put it in his knapsack, and shuffled them out the door. Uh, no, they were they, they were the they were negligent. Take. They were negligent in storing their yeah. firearm and did not educate the child. You know, each year we lose 800 kids, 19 years and younger, who commit suicide, and 85 percent of those suicides are done with their parents' gun. Now, why wouldn't you lock up your gun, for Christ's sakes? Why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you make sure that no, no one, no kid could get your gun? You would. If I owned the gun, I would. But there's a lot of people that don't. And, and, the point and unfortunately... Is, you know, all, all, you can do, all you can do is to say, okay, the consequence is so severe that maybe because the consequence is so severe, they would do the right thing. But what happens is, is with those consequences... Uh, what happens was when you start writing laws is that people like me get caught up in it because of the overzealous safety factor of trying to save everybody. And the next thing I know, uh, a word is said over a fence or uh, somebody hears me having a conversation. It gets reported to the authorities. It falls into a law. They come to my home with a warrant. They take all my guns, and then I have to prove that, that, to get them back that I store them correctly. Or if somebody comes over to my house and I was cleaning my pistol, hadn't put it up yet, and just sitting on the table when I went to answer the door, who might not uh, feel no. the same way I do about guns, now I'm caught up in a big legal battle to get my firearms back, proving uh, with an ever-changing standard of how whatever this person said about me is not correct. Well, first of all, I doubt that if the person said something about, I can't imagine what they'd say other than, you're, you know, you were going to kill, kill somebody. Um, but, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you a parallel. Um, and uh, I've been there and I have friends in England who do own guns. They're, they're, they're hunters and they have guns. And the laws are that the guns have to be stored in a precise way, in a cabinet, unloaded, locked, the whole nine yards. And they actually do random inspections. You know, people will come to your house, inspectors, and if your gun's not stored properly, not only do they take your gun away, but you get a mandatory jail sentence. Guess what? Nobody ever has a gun stolen that's used by, you know, a kid or, you know, somebody who stole the gun. Never happens. So, so you would be okay in the United States of America for me, the gun owner, who has no prior record, who has an impeccable, uh, has a record as a police officer, veteran, no run-ins with the law, you would be okay for the authorities to randomly come by my house, where I have to be available, come in and and just pop in unannounced and walk through the house and make sure my guns are, are secured. You'd be okay what with that? I, what, well, here's what I'd be okay with, that if, some, if, if somebody took your gun a child, say, a friend of a child, etc., and they used that gun in a way that's horrific to contemplate, shooting other kids at school or whatever, that you'd be an accomplice to murder. I'd be fine with that. Nobody has to come to your house. And again, I'd be very, I'd be very fine with that. Murder, but, uh, murder has to have intent. It would be involuntary manslaughter. Well, Still a felony. Whatever the, whatever the term of art is, the term of art should be, you know, that the, the, the implication of it or the consequence of it would be that you'd go to jail for a long time. Because it's, it, it's unconscionable that anybody would leave a, a gun around that a, a child could get. Of course, if we had smart guns, it wouldn't matter. But the NRA is not about to give up 25% of the industry sales. Because if we had smart guns, it would choke getting sales guns to the criminals. Okay. And that's something, by the way, just as a quick aside, Mike, you know, I, you know, I'm, we're talking for the first time. Um, I absolutely respect anybody who's been a police officer. The idea that you go out every day and your life's on the line every single moment, to me, it's, wow, I, you know, my my hat and respect goes to anyone who's, who's served as a police officer. And I know, I know, having that background, that you would not want criminals to be armed. You know, that's the last thing you'd want. So why can't we work together 
you know, and stop the trafficking. You know, I mean, that's, that's such a simple thing. And yet when we suggest we're going to stop the trafficking, we're going to, you know, have background checks at the gun shows, we're going to, you know, uh, have penalties for straw purchasing, make those felonies, there's mm -hmm. such resistance.